we proudly say so in all our deliberations uh, of the Indian situation, Indian culture, diverse unity in diversity. But these very diversification factors have become challenges for ensuring access and equity. That is the first observation I am making. The access and equity to ensure them, the, the so-called unity in diversity has become the challenge part. One uppermost challenge in the form of diversity is the languages. I was earlier uh, knowing that constitutionally accepted number of languages 14, but in the morning uh, when the main speaker made a reference, he said 22 languages are constitutionally accepted. And most of, and all of our states are uh, based upon the linguistic pattern. And therefore, every university is probably establishing the language universities, are, that also a statistics was given, 19 language universities we have. And Professor Prasad has rightly said, the Urdu University is the right platform to discuss the role of language university in ensuring uh, access and equity through ODL system. And I have also, out of my memory, the facts that were given was, we have 52 million Urdu knowing people in India, meaning 5.2 crores. And probably no, no regional language state has so much a population are almost equal to that. In fact, Karnataka itself has 5.5 crores. So therefore, the number of people knowing Urdu is so much, so for Urdu University has a good uh, lot of clients all over the country to bring them together and make them uh, involved in higher education system through Urdu is a great challenge. And the kind of development that has taken place in Urdu University for the last 15 years or so is wonderful. In fact, I had seen this university in the beginning when the first vice chancellor was here. Now after a break of about 10 years I have seen and wonderful physical infrastructure have been developed and also the kind of development as briefly explained by the director at that time. So to list the kind of diversities that we have, language is one diversity and the number of uh, communities and uh, caste that we have in India. All these pose a number of questions when we start of ensuring equity and uh, uh, access. Then economic disparities between the states and within the state, within the districts of each state, economic disparities, that also to be kept in mind while ensuring these two factors. Then we also have urban-rural disparities. Again, that should be kept in mind. And all the programs that we chuck out should also touch upon this, uh, the, uh, the quantum of uh, attention that we are supposed to give for rural-urban. Then we have men and women gender bias. That also to be kept in mind. Then literates and illiterates. The illiterate population, as we all know, is still uh, not cross 70%. As the stati and statistics are also misleading, uh, as somebody was referring, the number of universities, number of colleges, number of students in all over the country, all these things, slightly misleading, uh, every uh, presentations, every time, we get some, uh, uh, of course, marginally diverted figures. Then uh, literates, then geographical differences in the whole country. Probably no other country in the world has so much of, uh, you know, disparities and diversities. Against all these diversified factors, we have to develop and ensure access and equity. This is the first observation I wanted to make. The rest of it, I would leave to the uh, honorable panelists. In fact, I was interested in discussing the policy of higher education in India based upon national policy of education, which uh, I request to you all that I am not going to speak in English. I will, now and then, I may say some words or sentences in English. Because in this uh, ODL system, Indian language universities, role of Indian language, Winston Narakabati, I will speak in Telugu, because I am Telugu University Vice Chancellor. First and first, Urdu University ఈ విధంగా ఓపెన్ యూనివర్సిటీ సిస్టంలో భారతీయ భాషల పాత్ర 
ఏమిటి అన్న అంశం మీద ఈ మూడు రోజుల సెమినార్ చేయడానికి కాన్ఫరెన్స్ చేయడానికి పూనుకున్నటువంటి ఈ డిస్టెంట్ ఎడ్యుకేషన్ డైరెక్టర్ ఇక్బాల్ అహ్మద్ గారిని ఈ వైస్ ఈ యూనివర్సిటీ వైస్ ఛాన్సలర్ గారిని నేను మొదట అభినందిస్తున్నాను మీరు ముందుకు వచ్చినందుకు ప్రత్యేకంగా వీరికి అభినందాలు ఇందులో పాల్గొనే అవకాశాన్ని నాకు ఇచ్చినందుకు కూడా వీరికి ప్రత్యేకంగా నేను ధన్యవాదాలు చెబుతున్నాను మీ అందరికి కూడా నమస్కారము నాతో ఉన్నటువంటి ఈ రామే గౌడ గారికి భరత్ భూషణ్ గారికి వికాస్ గుప్త గారికి కృతజ్ఞత చెబుతున్నాను నేను జస్ట్ ఈ వారు చెప్పినటువంటి పాయింట్ ఒకటే నా అనుభవంలో నేను చెప్తున్నటువంటి విషయం ప్లీజ్ ఎవరైనా ఫాలో కాకపోతే ఐఎమ్ వెరీ సారీ ఓపెన్ యూనివర్సిటీ సిస్టమ్ ఏ విధంగా స్టార్ట్ అయిందో మనకు తెలుసు మొదలు కన్వెన్షన్ యూనివర్సిటీస్ ఉన్నాయి దాని లక్షణం ప్రధానంగా ఏంటంటే స్టూడెంట్స్ యూనివర్సిటీ దగ్గరికి వస్తారు ఇది పద్ధతి విద్యావేత్తలను చాలామందిని చేయాలి ఈ దేశము అనేటువంటి కాన్సెప్ట్ వచ్చిన తర్వాత ఇప్పుడు మీరు చెప్పినారే పర్సంటేజ్ని మనం పెంచుకోవాలి విద్యావేత్తలను అని అది వచ్చిన తర్వాత ఒకటి మరొక బ్యాక్గ్రౌండ్ యూనివర్సిటీస్ ప్రత్యేకంగా డబ్బును తమ డబ్బును తామే సంపాదించుకోవాలనేటువంటి గవర్నమెంట్ స్టేట్ గవర్నమెంట్ యొక్క ఉద్దేశాల చేత ఈ ఓడిఎల్ సిస్టమ్ను ఏర్పాటు చేసుకోవాల్సి వచ్చింది డిస్టెంట్ ఎడ్యుకేషన్ అప్పుడు డిస్టెన్స్ ఎడ్యుకేషన్ అవుతుంది స్టూడెంట్స్ యూనివర్సిటీ దగ్గరకు వచ్చేటువంటి సిస్టమ్ నుంచి యూనివర్సిటీ స్టూడెంట్స్ దగ్గరికి పోతుంది ఇది ప్రధానమైనటువంటి చేంజ్ వాళ్ళు మన దగ్గరికి రారు మనమే వాళ్ళ దగ్గరికి వెళుతున్నాం ఈ సిస్టంలో మనం అనుసరిస్తున్నటువంటి పద్ధతులు ఒక నాలుగు పాయింట్స్ గుంటే చెబుతాను నా ఎక్స్పీరియన్స్ ఐ హ్ స్టార్టెడ్ మై కెరియర్ ఐజ్ జూనియర్ లెక్చర్ ఇన్ తెలుగు ఎట్ కాక్ యూనివర్సిటీ వరంగల్ ఎట్ ప్రైవేట్ కాలేజ్ వరంగల్ ఆఫ్టర్ వర్డ్స్ ఐ బికేమ్ ది ప్రొఫెసర్ ఆఫ్ కాక్ యూనివర్సిటీ దెన్ ఆఫ్టర్ వర్డ్స్ ఫ్రమ్ టూ అండ్ హాఫ్ ఇయర్స్ ఆన్ వర్డ్స్ ఐఎమ్ వర్కింగ్ ఐజ్ వైస్ ఛాన్సలర్ ఇన్ తెలుగు యూనివర్సిటీ దట్ ఈస్ పొట్టి శ్రీరాములు నేమ్డ్ రీసెంట్లీ జస్ట్ త్రీ ఫోర్ మంత్స్ బ్యాక్ ఐ హ్యావ్ టేకన్ ఇన్ ఛార్జ్ వైస్ ఛాన్సలర్ ఆఫ్ అంబేద్కర్ ఓపెన్ యూనివర్సిటీ ఐ హ్యావ్ వైల్ ఐఎమ్ వర్కింగ్ ఇన్ లాల్ బహదూర్ కాలేజ్ ప్రైవేట్ కాలేజ్ ఐ హ్యావ్ స్టార్టెడ్ ఐ విల్ సే ఫస్ట్ ఇన్ ఫస్ట్ ఆంధ్రప్రదేశ్ ఓపెన్ యూనివర్సిటీ నవ్ ఇట్ ఈస్ నేమ్డ్ ఐజ్ అంబేద్కర్ ఓపెన్ యూనివర్సిటీ ఈజ్ ఫస్ట్ యూనివర్సిటీ ఇన్ అన్న మరి ఇన్ ఇండియా ఆఫ్టర్ దట్ ఓన్లీ గ్రో ఈ స్టార్టెడ్ ఆఫ్టర్ దట్ ఆల్ యూనివర్సిటీస్ ఆర్ కమింగ్ రీసెంట్లీ డెక్ హెస్ కండక్టెడ్ ఏ మీటింగ్ విత్ ఆల్ ది ఓపెన్ యూనివర్సిటీ వైస్ ఛాన్సలర్స్ అండ్ డైరెక్టర్స్ ఆన్ ద టూ డేస్ సెమినార్ ది దట్ డెక్ డెక్ డైరెక్టర్ హీ సెట్ అంబేద్కర్ ఓపెన్ యూనివర్సిటీ ఈజ్ హ్యావింగ్ ఏ బెస్ట్ ఇన్ఫ్రాస్ట్రక్చర్ ఇన్ సైన్స్ ఆల్సో దట్ ఈస్ ది క్రెడిట్ ఆఫ్ దిస్ అంబేద్కర్ ఓపెన్ యూనివర్సిటీ దట్ ఐ హ్యావ్ టు సే ఇన్ ఫస్ట్ ఐ హ్యావ్ వర్క్డ్ ఐజ్ ఏ కౌన్సిలర్ ఇన్ తెలుగు వెన్ ది ఓపెన్ యూనివర్సిటీ అంబేద్కర్ ఓపెన్ యూనివర్సిటీ స్టార్టెడ్ ఐజ్ ఏ కౌన్సిలర్ ఫస్ట్ ఎవ్రీబడి ఈజ్ వెరీ మచ్ ఇంట్రెస్టెడ్ టు టీచ్ ది స్టూడెంట్స్ ఐజ్ ఇఫ్ ద స్టూడెంట్స్ ఆర్ ది స్టూడెంట్స్ హూ ఆర్ టేకింగ్ అడ్మిషన్ ఇన్ ది ఓపెన్ యూనివర్సిటీస్ దే ఆర్ వెరీ మచ్ ఇంట్రెస్టెడ్ టు స్టడీస్ ఓన్లీ స్టడీ పర్పస్ వేర్ ఈస్ ఇన్ సమ్ ఈ దిస్ రెగ్యులర్ యూనివర్సిటీస్ కన్వెన్షనల్ యూనివర్సిటీస్ ఫర్ సమ్ అదర్ రీజన్స్ ఆర్ దేర్ ఆర్ కమింగ్ ఫర్ అదర్ పర్పసెస్ ఆల్సో బట్ ఇన్ ఓపెన్ యూనివర్సిటీ సిస్టమ్ డెఫినెట్లీ ఇన్ ఫస్ట్ ఇన్ ఫస్ట్ స్టేజ్ ఐఎమ్ సే ఇన్ ఫస్ట్ స్టేజ్ దే ఆర్ కమింగ్ ఓన్లీ టు లెర్న్ టు లెర్న్ టు లెర్న్ అఫ్ కోర్స్ ది యూనివర్సిటీ ఈజ్ స్టార్టెడ్ టు గివ్ అడ్మిషన్స్ టు రేజ్ ది స్టడీ లెవెల్స్ హూ హ్యావ్ డ్రాప్డ్ ఎట్ ది స్కూల్ లెవెల్ పర్టికులర్లీ హౌస్ వైఫ్స్ అండ్ విత్ సమ్ చిన్నగా చిన్న చిన్న ఎంప్లాయ్మెంట్ చేస్తున్నటువంటి వాళ్ళు హయ్యర్ స్టడీస్ చేసుకోవడం కోసం చేసినటువంటి విధానము ఆ విధంగా ఇది ప్రారంభమైనప్పుడు కౌన్సిలర్లు ప్రధానంగా రోల్ చేయటం వల్ల చాలామంది ఇష్టంగా ఉన్నారు వచ్చిన స్టూడెంట్స్లో మెజారిటీ ఆఫ్ ది స్టూడెంట్స్ ఆర్ హౌస్ వైఫ్స్ ఓన్లీ ఓన్లీ గర్ల్స్ మెన్ కంపేర్ టు ది మేల్ క్యాండిడేట్స్ ఇట్స్ ఇట్ షోస్ ది మెజారిటీ లేడీస్ స్టూడెంట్స్ ఆర్ ఇంట్రెస్టెడ్ టు రీడ్ if they have provided the provided to um, read this material or something after it is uh, in other words 
one thing i would like to say material in uh, inaugural session that uh, i is, i think vasantara ho has said about this material sari ayinatuvanti de lekunda unnatlaithe quality 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 nowadays we are only discussing on the quality quality because మనం దాని నుంచి దూరం అయిపోయినాము క్వాలిటీ నుంచి అప్పుడు మాత్రమే క్వాలిటీ అనేటువంటి పరిస్థితి వచ్చింది వసంతరావు గారు సరిగ్గా చెప్పినారు ఢిల్లీలో ఉండేటువంటి చాలా సెంటర్స్ అన్ని కొన్ని పబ్లికేషన్స్ పబ్లిషింగ్ సెంటర్స్ అన్ని కూడా దే ఆర్ రెడీ టు గివ్ సప్లై ఎనీ టైప్ ఆఫ్ మెటీరియల్ విత్ ఇన్ నో టైం ఆ పరిస్థితిలో ఉన్నప్పుడు ఆ మెటీరియల్ క్వాలిటేటివ్గా ఉండదు అనేటువంటి అందరికి తెలుస్తున్న విషయమే ఈ క్వాలిటీ మెయింటైన్ చేయని పరిస్థితి ఉంది అన్న విషయాన్ని వీఆర్ ఆల్ యాక్సెప్టింగ్ uniformly in nation wide also what we have to do i would like to say one thing about uh, the study centers without the infrastructure sir so they are starting the study centers somebody has coming without any infrastructure they will they will run the study center somebody has the uh, vice chancellor sir uh, director sir giving study centers permissions to them asanta rao sir in our session we has a certificate to the distant education students they have insisted that like that that means we are coming regularly they are coming or not coming they are given they are getting the certificates with first class when they are going to the uh, interviews for employment there is no change who ever impresses in education pad media or in other way also they are getting this is the uh, just uh, comparison vallaku kontiga ee conventional students lo aa bhavana modatti nunchi unna lakshana ganipistundi adi kramanga perugutundi ee kramanga peragadaniki kaaranam appudu vasantharav garu cheppinattu gaane state governments funds we used this mirror raise chesukovali కొన్ని యూనివర్సిటీస్ వారు చెప్పినటువంటి విషయాలన్నీ కూడా అందరు అంటున్నటువంటివే అనుభవంలో ఉండేటువంటి విషయం కూడా చెబుతున్నారు గవ ఎంప్లాయ్ జీతాన్ని ఇవ్వడానికి వీలుడైన పరిస్థితిలో ఈ డిస్టెంట్ ఎడ్యుకేషన్ ద్వారా వచ్చినటువంటి డబ్బు మాత్రమే కొన్ని నెలల వరకు కూడా జీతాలు ఇచ్చేటువంటి పరిస్థితులు అవి సెల్ఫ్ సఫిషియంట్గా ఉన్నాయి అంటే ఈ డబ్బు రావడానికి ఎంతమంది విద్యార్థులు దీనిలో ఎన్రోల్ అవుతున్నారో తెలుస్తుంది కొన్ని విషయాలు నేను మొదట్లో కన్ కౌన్సిలర్గా పనిచేసినాను తర్వాత కూడా చూసినాను కాబట్టి రెండుకి తేడా చెప్తున్నాను మొదట్లో చదువుకోవాలనేటువంటి శ్రద్ధ ఉండేటువంటి వ్యవహారం నుంచి డబ్బు ఇస్తే ఏడాది అయితే రెండేళ్ళైతే సర్టిఫికెట్ వస్తుంది అనేటువంటి భావన రావడం అనేది జరిగింది ఇవి కొన్ని యూనివర్సిటీ చేస్తున్నటువంటి పనుల వల్ల అనేది అంటున్నాం దెర్ ఈస్ నో చెక్ ప్రధానంగా ఈ రకమైనటువంటి దృష్టి రావడానికి ఎంఫిల్ పిహెచ్డీలే కారణం some university state university has started mphil and phd courses ugc insisting now one supervisor cannot supervise not more than 8 students but where is in open university system some universities are giving without seeing anything you have you have no you already know about the dravada university or something nagarjuna university there are comrades against dals because of mphil and phd only the stress on quality has arisen as far as my knowledge goes otherwise the uh, to darikante mundu ee rakamainatundi dani meeda stress raledu mphil phd anedi vachesindi ippudu ugc mphil ku gurtimpu ivadam ledu కానీ సర్టిఫికెట్ మాత్రం వాళ్ళు తీసుకోవడానికి వీలుగా ఉంది పిహెచ్డి క్వాలిటీ పోతుంది 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 దెర్ ఇస్ నో క్వాలిటీ ఇన్ పిహెచ్డీస్ అంటున్నారు బట్ ఈ పరిస్థితి రెగ్యులర్ యూనివర్సిటీలో ఉన్ కూడా ఉంది అని కన్వెన్షనల్ యూనివర్సిటీస్ ఆల్సో ఇన్ కన్వెన్షనల్ యూనివర్సిటీస్ ఆల్సో పిహెచ్డీస్ ఆర్ సబ్ స్టాండర్డ్స్ ఆ అనేటువంటి మాట కూడా మనం వింటున్నాం కానీ ఓపెన్ డిస్టెన్స్ ఓడిఎల్ ద్వారా వస్తున్నటువంటి పిహెచ్డీలే దాని మీద మాత్రమే ఆ రికగ్ని ఆ సూపర్వైజర్ సూపర్వైజర్ ఎవరో తెలియకుండా ఆయన ఏంటో తెలియకుండా దెర్ ఆర్ సమ్ సూపర్వైజర్ దే ఆర్ సెలెక్టింగ్ సూపర్వైజర్స్ ఇఫ్ దే హ్యావ్ ఎనీ 
just two years of teaching experience, they will be given PhD supervision without knowing his name, biota or anything. He may supervise properly or not. He will, the student may give some money to some other person. He will submitting it. He is getting the degree. This is happening majority because of this situation only the quality, quality <coughs> issue has arisen. In one more thing, exam centers. I will say one experience while in Kakuti University there are, I have known, mass copy, this is happening. We have to accept it. But what is that mass copying observers, they are, observers are going. But whereas that centers are, uh, center officials are restricting them not to visit these study centers, exam centers. Open mass copy. This is the one of the reasons. The university has no control, direct control on that exam center. This is happening. This is happening because we are encouraging uh, to enhance the study centers. They are coming forward. If you give some percentage, more percentage, 40 percentage, we will uh, take your affiliation, we will take. In that cases, this is happening. Yes, just they are selling the certificates. Really speaking, recently one student, a uh, graduate, she has written exam on behalf of her sister. She is supplying, supplying, supplying. It is open, open, open. This examination center is at Mandal headquarters. I am saying it uh, purely uh, uh, real facts. Who is taking the certificate through ODL by writing, copying? He himself saying that ODL degrees are not valuable. He knows perfectly well that this is happening in system. I am not saying 100 percent, but this is happening. Because of this only, I think the quality has fall down in the ODL system. Sorry, I have, 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 just I have, I uh, I have shared my experience. Starting ki padki open history start here padki 83, 85. Appadi ki padki ki unde 23 dar ne raise thuna ru. Rende vishya ru. Yi parishodhan lava tam malla. Yi parishodhan vishya man na ru. Parishodhan tapakunda unda al sindi kani supervisor ki student ki yeh mihi unda tam leh. Adi lack poora malla chala custom. Isar ki aru guru students ni. Regular government panjeshya man laite, order manam sarigha supervise chele. Kuni ekara era kamin of topics was tayente, unless supervises himself experienced or uh, gathers some more talented in that subject, he cannot supervise him. Now, Poka supervisor unarun in my experience of Tanu, Poka topic vishima chevarapu aina yemi chapaleka nanu. Repra, Mapura, and Kuntu Yadu Chesha, time pass Chesha. Atharavata, I have a point spurinchi, then only I have a Sadukuna Taravata, I have a point chipinadu. Naga the experience of Kajaputan. Unless supervisor, Okota subject to me that Tanakunde twenty knowledge Jimmy the Matran depended Kadu. Regular university Gari, college of Lugari Kontamandi, teacher Sunaru, Kamata and Punaru, teacher community law Undi Kuda. A point in a telare and retired in a Taka Panjas to Naduan. He is not at all attending the classes in any way. Wakamada would not take MA level law and A notes like they prepare just to Nado. Our notes to Matrime, he is going to going through this material only till his retirement. This is happening. There are some teachers like that. If at all he becomes the supervisor. How can he supervise hundreds of students in ODL system? 
That's why the students who are taking the certificates through ODL, MPhil PhDs and MAs, higher degrees, they know perfectly well this is not correct. His soul says this is not correct system. This is happening in ODL system. What we have to do? Nobody is saying. Just now I have discussed with you uh, this Uttam Rao. He is also not saying something uh, correctly. Unless DEC has some control about this ODL system, we cannot do anything. This is happening in the ODL system. Please think about the two, what, what we have to do. In this background only, UGC has restricted not to give any PhD admission through ODL system. Because of this only, this clearly shows that this is not at all encouraged, to be encouraged. This is not qualitative. It is not possible to maintain the quality if it happens like this. They have restricted only for eight students to guide, to supervise. It is my simply observation, but I am saying my experience, but I am not at all giving any uh, suggestions. I am uh, leaving it to your people. Thank you, participants. Thank you, Professor uh, Gumaya, Vice Chancellor of Telugu University. Uh, your total observation has been how to maintain quality in distance education. You have narrated the field experience of what is happening, and also you have taken the example of MPhil PhD. In fact. In my initial talk also, I wanted to raise an issue on this because it was also raised by the main speakers today. The MPhil PhD through distance mode is not acceptable. UGC has taken a decision. That we do not agree with it. Just because some practitioner does it, instead of taking action on the practitioner, you can't take action on the system. You are encouraging distance education throughout the country you, we say it is a blessing in days for a country like ours, where the formal system resources, manpower system resources can be used. And in order to raise the access of higher education, the best mode is distance education. When you are encouraging like this, at the same time, you say MPhil PhD is not acceptable. This is not correct. So therefore, the solution lies in punishing the practitioner, but not punishing the system. Present over there, they are regulating the standards of education. We are basically acting as a facilitator to regulate the standards of open and distance education in the country. The first point which was raised by sir is about the quality. The quality. Everybody, see when I started teaching, I made a notes of my subject. The next year I wanted to change all my subjects so that I can have a full knowledge of all my subjects. But the teachers, the senior teachers over there, they resisted to it. They, they, were, they were in a jo jolly mood. They said, hey, Vikas, why do you want to change the subjects? We all, all these years, we have been teaching through these our conventional notes. Why you want that we should change ourselves? So I said, sir, this is only a means of learning also. Teaching is always a learning process. But then all of them said, OK, fine, no problem. Whatever subjects you have been taking last year, you continue to take that along with others, you whichever you want to take. So it is not a thing that a system only in ODL needs an improvement, even in the conventional system also, that needs a lot of improvement. So that this issue, issue I am not raising at all, ki which system is good, which system is bad, because every system which starts moving has one or the other kind of a limitations. But when I am concerned about distance education, my prime focus is to improve the quality and the standards of distance education, nothing beyond that. Whereas when this topic was initiated, the national conference, excess and equity through ODL in higher education, that is a broad topic. It is providing opportunity to all in higher education. Then the second topic comes, role of Indian language universities. See, in an ODL system, we are reaching to the unreached. Whereas in a conventional system, they are coming. We are reaching to the unreached. Even in their places also, there the knowledge is a big, the, uh, the language is a big problem, like what I face now. It is a big problem that I, I was not able to understand 
most part of the deliberations which took place. But ultimately, if this could be provided to be in English or in Hindi or in a language in which I am more comfortable, it would have been better for me. So that is where the role of Indian language universities plays a very big factor in providing an access to the students in that specific place by which he can easily maneuver or knowledge, gain the knowledge which is being taught. Again over here, the deck again plays a role over here. See about the curriculum. When we talk about curriculum, the curriculum is being taught everywhere. Again, the curriculum is framed depending upon the needs of the states, depending upon the needs of the region. But always there is a provision wherein the specific universities or the specific institutions can incorporate the requirements according to their own needs. But if a quality material is available with me, if a quality material is available with me in a subject, like most of you must have observed that in Bachelor of Computer Application, in the first year of mathematics, 90% students fails. In first year mathematics of Bachelor of Computer Application, 90% of the students fails. I'm not talking about cheating or mass copying, nothing else, but that is a general fact because they don't have a subject knowledge of mathematics at the school level, but ultimately as a requirement of BCA, that first year mathematics is compulsory, they fail. So we are taking steps towards that also, that wherever the course material for BCA in a quality form is available, we are placing it before the expert and we try to put that course material in the common pool of our program so that anybody can accept it from anywhere and even can translate, adopt the study material and impart the way of education. That is where the DEC plays a role providing an access to the students in a more qualitative manner. In whichever language, if he, he's, if he or she is more comfortable, he or she can gain that knowledge. The other point, uh, the, the DEC, the DEC again plays a role over there. We provide funds. We provide funds for the major part of our grants is provided for writing course materials. Am I right, sir? Major part of it, sir, you are also receiving that. Ultimately, you cannot answer. I am asking you to. So we are providing funds for major, major chunk of our grant, which is provided to the DI, Distance Education Institute, dual mode universities, is for writing course materials. So ultimately, again, now if you want, the deck should interfere in each and every nitty gritties of your. We have no problems. We will have some more efforts. We will interfere in that also. But we are giving an opportunity to you because you as the regulators of distance education of your own state can play a major role in developing the kind of course material which is needed by the students of your region. I cannot see that. I am seeing the country has a role. Ki they were the gross enrollment ratio at present is hardly 11 to 12 percent and we are playing a major role in providing an opportunities to the most number of students. Again, the second point, we do provide funds for research and development. Now, what, why do we need research? Why do we need research? Again, the research again plays a major big role in facilitating or promoting the education in a simpler way. That is where, why do we have those research? That whatever facilities we have, we want to have a better access to all those things in a simpler way which anybody could understand. Over the years, there have been tests which have been going on. But research has made the tests more simpler. Even in just few days from now, a chip would come, which would, which would take your blood sample and tell you about the STD, whatever diseases the person are having. You know about the blood sugar and all these things. Ultimately, the research is being done to make the life more simpler. So we do provide funds from that also. Apart from that, the DEC again plays a major big role in providing the financial support for technology developments. Now technology development means what? Only computers know that technology development means whatever latest developments that have taken place, that can be utilized or adopted by a university system to provide a qualitative education. In a conventional system, in a classroom, we can have a maximum strength of 45 students, 60 students, okay, make it 90. But even then also, that is not there. But in ODL system, by recording one lecture, through various means, at a single stroke, I can cater to 1,000 students simultaneously. So again, the teacher being a role model can play a very big role in providing the qualitative education. Apart from that, sir, there are certain things which sir has raised. Uh, again, they, uh, we are providing funds.
for infrastructure development to the universities. We provide funds worth crores of rupees for construction of building. The sir has thrown a ball in my court, so that's why I'm taking these things. Huh? The, the, when we provide funds, we do ask for initial proposals. The proposal is being asked, when, then we provide funds. But ultimately, the university, they change the purpose of utilization of funds. Okay? And when we have to restrict, definitely we have to bear the brunt from the university also, from the system also. But ultimately, the change is being made by the users. So that is where the focus is. The role which is being played by the universities, the, the role which is being played by the dual mode institutions, do has a major impact in ensuring the quality of ODL system. Sir, in the last, before, I am not of this kind that we should have a gap between an ODL system and a conventional system. What my perception is that ODL system and conventional system should come together. Because you might, must have noticed that the notes which has been prepared by the dual mode, the distance education institutions, the regular students of the university do refer to those notes for appearing in their final examinations. Why? Why? It means that there is a quality. And when we talk about quality, there is always a scope for improvement. The, when we talk about a course material, we say this course material has become obsolete. What is the definition of obsolete? No course material becomes obsolete. Only thing is the user changes. When I was in graduation, I learned about digital electronics. Few years I noticed that digital electronics, which I learned in first year of my electronics, is being taught to the students who are just in 11th and 12th. But when I have gained that knowledge, I see that is obsolete. No, it has not been, it has obsolete, it is obsolete for me. But it is of most important use to a student who has now started learning that 11th and 12th digital electronics. In the last, I would share one story with all of you, which you people have, must have heard about it. Story of a hare and a tortoise. Khargosh or Kachwe ki kahani, aapne sabsne suni hai. Ki dono me race lagti hai. And I will try to build up in English and Hindi both, but whatever way. Ki Khargosh or Kachwe me race lagi. Ab dono me se ek, ya to conventional mode ka hai, ya distance mode ka hai. Ab ye kaun hai, ye mein nahi bata raha hoon. Aapko ya decide kariye ga. दोनों में रेस लगती है दोनों रेस लगाते हैं खरगोश तेज भागता है वो जाके सो जाता है और कछुआ आगे निकल जाता है रेस कछुआ जीत जाता है तो हम लोगों ने मॉरल दे दिया स्लो एंड स्टडी विंस द रेस अब नाउ हु इज स्लो एंड हु इज स्टडी आई एम नॉट डाउटिंग थोड़े दिन के बाद अब दोनों में फिर से रेस लगती है अब वो रेस उस डायरेक्शन की बजाय दूसरी डायरेक्शन में लगती है अब दूसरी डायरेक्शन में जब रेस लगती है खरगोश फिर तेज भागता है अब वो फिर तेज भागता है लेकिन अब आगे जाता है तो वो देखता है कि उधर तो रास्ते में एक तालाब आ गया है अब खरगोश तैरना नहीं जानता वो वहाँ थोड़ी देर बैठता है वहाँ ठंडी हवा चलती है वो फिर सो जाता है उतनी देर में खचुआ फिर आगे निकल जाता है तो अल्टीमेटली अब इसमें अगर आप देखें रिसोर्सेज कितने वेस्ट हुए स्टोरी में अगर दोनों में एक तालमेल होता कन्वेंशनल में और एक डिस्टेंस मोड में दोनों में एक तालमेल चलता कि जब तक तो लैंड था तब तक वो जो खरगोश था अगर वो कछुए को अपनी पीठ पे बिठा लेता तो वो नदी तक तेजी से पहुंच जाता और नदी के बाद अगर कछुआ खरगोश को बिठा लेता तो वो आगे भी दोनों पार कर जाते तो दोनों मिलके अगर चल सकते हैं तो शायद दोनों अपनी एनर्जी भी सेव करेंगे अपना सिस्टम भी इंप्रूव कर पाएंगे और ज्यादा फास्ट टेक्नोलॉजी पे लर्न कर पाएंगे विद दीज वर्ड थैंक यू वेरी मच थैंक यू सर टू बी क्रिटिकल ऑफ इच अदर इंसिड ऑफ बींग क्रिटिकल टू इच अदर let us have a, uh, an introspection and uh, get rid of all shortcomings and this thing and let us have an improvement uh, improved vision in this uh, education so, agree, agreed sir thank you sir there also sir we i know i have been looking after examinations of St number of cases of impersonation are there sir. even even i am sharing one more thing sir with you that in system last week myself and dr bharat bhushan were sitting in my chamber one parent came to me he came to me I just sent a card, okay, sir, I want to meet you, okay, fine. I thought he must be having a query with him. That, that, I'm taking one more time, sir. The, he asked me about some university. Whatever rule says, we told him. Okay? 
Then he started inquiring more about some few more universities. We told him about few more universities also. He asked about approval, we told him, he asked about, then he asked about the study centers also. So whatever is our policy, our policy is the council's policy. The council policy says the, the open and distance learning cannot have a territorial jurisdiction. But there are other regulators in our country also. Like our sir talked about 44 universities for which Ministry of Human Resource Development made a big issue out of it. And for the last four years where that issue has gone, nobody is aware of that. But ultimately one day or the other we would hear about something would come out of it. Then that's what I'm saying that there are several other regulators. And I don't want to, being a distance education, I want to restrict myself only to the regime of distance education council. There are other regulators like UGC and AICT. They are having their own jurisdiction that so they can say. So in my council, <coughs> we have taken a decision that open and distance learning cannot have a territorial jurisdiction. Okay? At the same time, we do not allow anybody to have study centers because, again, that tends to money minting machine. We do not allow. We are not even allow allowing franchising of the study centers. It is open for the university to decide whether they would like, whether, how, and in what means, if they are going to start the study centers, how they are going to regulate those study centers, and how they are going to control the imparting of education to the students. I told him those issues also in South. He asked me, is this approved? I was a little bit annoyed. He said, you are asking to, that your child wants to have a degree of BCA course. Already, you want that your child should have a degree. You are in Delhi. The best university which is close to you is Indira Gandhi National Open University. You have it. <coughs> Question, sir, is there any university in which my child should appear in one sitting and clear all the examinations? So ultimately, it is a case of demand and supply. That research and developments which uh, forms the backbone of any system in order to bring in quality and standards. Open and distance learning system being a dynamic system driven by societal, economic and technological changes has been changing rapidly and dramatically. The changing technological environment of distance education and paradigm shift affecting it needs to be periodically reviewed. Also, innovations being an integral part of ODL system, it becomes imperative to evaluate the system from time to time in order to strengthen the system. As we all know, the ODL system has come into an existence for certain philosophical, economic and social reasons as an alternative system of enhancing the quality, resource, potential of the society for providing societal justice to establish benef uh, beneficial links between education, employment, and economic development, and also to expand the democratizing higher education in order to reach out to the denied and deprived sections of the society. A review of the uh, developmental effects of education, distance education, in higher education is required in order to find out who the users of the system are and what benefits they have derived. Above all, there is a need for research and empirical evidences to influence the policy makers in order to correct and weakness of ODL system with a view to improving the system and thereby enhancing its credibility. When we talk about research, there are generally two types of research. One is discipline-based research, and one is system-based research. And uh, in 1996, Distance Education Council was given a thought that we should have some research policy. Because the faculties which were involved in distance education system, system, they were denied of doing research by UGC, and there were no funds. Then we thought that we should have a policy first for systemic development. And later on, we can think on subject-based research also. So in 1996, we launched distance, uh, research in distance education system. That was, uh, in fact, had uh, primarily three, four objectives, which I am sharing with you. That 
it should encourage the system based research number one number two it should undertake in depth studies for evaluation of distance education program their impact and effectiveness with a view and a feedback is given as to how to improve this how to attract the attention and there i remember we have said unless some questions appear from the content of the cassettes whether it is audio or video we don't take serious about the use of audio cassette we, that is our conventional uh, uh, trend so therefore now i just a small question to mr bharat bhushan we also know that a ugc has formed a committee with mr tyagarajan as the chairman and number of members you have mentioned about mr madhaya whom we know he is uh, the former vice chancellor of mysore university and a circular has come to all universities that a set of procedures have been formulated by ugc they wanted all the university to respond and send their uh, uh, details of how they select uh, uh, the conduct entrance test how they select uh, uh, the guides uh, all these details have been asked and this committee is going to go through all those report if the reports are very good on the report form itself they would straight away say that this university can run phd and mphil program and those raise some doubts about the uh, you know uh, the following the procedure then a committee would visit those universities and finally give a, uh, a i mean uh, decision whether which are the universities approved by ugc for mphil phd that is the situation and you know the statistics how many have responded now my only question to bharat bhushan is when you have participated as a representative of tech in the ugc committee what has happened as to why ugc has still taken the decision that mphil and phd through distance mode is not permitted we are we are anxious to know the result of it because i remember when we were the vice chancellors in the initial years of open universities in any formal universities out of 15 20 universities only open university representative is the vice chancellor of the open university we have faced uh, such uh, embarrassment all 19 vice chancellors are one side open university vice chancellor is on the other side i still remember professor patan was the vice chancellor of karnataka university dharwad i was representing uh, the vice chancellor as vice chancellor of the open university there used to be a big dialogue between the conventional vice chancellor and uh, the open university vice chancellor mine was the lone voice then but over a period of time everybody is now accepting it likewise when you have represented deck in the ugc what has happened we are anxious to know do they still say that uh, through distance mode it is not accepted or you could convince them ugc at that time what decision we took they ask us to request all open universities and dual mode universities who are offering program uh, mphil and phd through distance mode about the procedures they are following then i proposed there ki we will call it and we will have all these database then we will compile it and we will present from our side as distance education council because we are concerned for distance education programs but at the same time we propose that we will we can call some faculties or authorities of open universities because uh, universities are autonomous and it it may you know they more or less they are following the guidelines which you are saying as professor prasad said in the morning that they are certain requirements it cannot be exactly same what we are following in the formal system after that i think it is almost one year no meeting has taken place and still they are of the view but only yesterday when i was talking uh, with professor mohammad mia saab because uh, he also know all these members and he is also very much concerned about mphil phd through distance mode he was saying that at least because whenever i meet people like you you may be knowing some of the members of this expert committee and they are very very adamant as you said that no mphil phd through distance mode we i have been sharing my views my request with uh, whenever i meet such uh, dignitaries yes, sir please help us and please try to convince them that it is not like that if they are thinking
but definitely we can we can agree for that that we should reduce the numbers of intake for MPhil and PhD. If it is five or six per teacher in formal system, in our case, let it be twenty, but it not more be not more than you know uh, like this 500 600 under a teacher which is impossible it cannot be like that 10 20 is okay and you know another thing which what is happening why they are dead against i have also noticed professor gupta will also agree with me wherever these mphil and phds are being offered through distance mode we have ourselves have seen the guides they themselves are not mphil phd they are working in library and they have become a guide for M, uh, MPhil or PhD. They themselves have not. So UGC, up to some extent, sir, they are right, and I, I support them. That I, I am not denying that that UGC is hmm. not right. Hmm. But, but ultimately, again, the UGC was a principal player in having such kind of a fiasco. In 19, 1987, they issued the guidelines for implementation of national eligibility tax for appointment of lecturer which was not implemented till 1991. In 1991, a court case started between Delhi University and the University Grants Commission, as a result of which all the appointments were stopped till 1993-1994. In 1993-94, the, when the matter was not resolved in the court, they went to MHRD. MHRD said, OK, those who, are, who, those who have submitted their thesis by this date or those who have acquired MPhil by this date, they are exempted from test. The matter resolved for some time. Again, some pressure went on to MHRD. MHRD again relaxed those things. And there, what happened, ki that ministry, when that decision was take, took place, the time given was short. But when this decision took place, about 8 to 10 months, time was available with the, the qualified applicants. I would not say the teachers, the persons who are qualified, who are having a postgraduate degree with more than 55% of marks, and they were teaching as lecturers, but because of non, not having national eligibility test or MPhil or PhD, they were not being appointed as a regular lecturer. So they got an opportunity. Like in the morning, Professor Prasad said, the course material is available in Darya Ganj. That's, it is a demand and supply. When this regulation was also issued by MHRD, that those who would complete their MPhil by this date, and would submit their PhD thesis by this date, they would be exempted. And it is not in open universities, Dr. Bharat Bhushan, even in conventional universities also the same thing happened. You just see the data on which the last date of exemption was available. See how many universities in the last three, four years have submitted PhD thesis and on that last date, how many conventional universities have submitted. So ultimately, see, that's what I'm saying now. The more we are going to regulate the system, the more we are going to put the our clutches on them, ultimately that there are ways and means to find via media to escape that. So that is available. So that, that's it perfectly fine. Now, ultimately, when governments take some policy, there last week, sir, we were discussing with MHRD. They were discussing about fake universities, fake admission and all these things that universities are offering courses. You remember? They say, Ki bhai, you don't have any penal provision. They says, you just said, sir, we have penal provision. What is that? Sir, penalty of 1,000 rupees. Are they charge 50,000 rupees for admission, and you are charging a penalty of 1,000 rupees. Means what? You are regulating, you are regularizing an irregular admission for just 1,000. So ultimately, we are on the framework to have all those stiff provisions wherein there should be or could be less ways and means to destroy the system. But let us see how best we all can move together. Individually, I cannot. Individually, you can. So we all have to move together to make the system more vibrant, more receptive, more authoritative, definitely more quality control system. So that is the thing. Thank you very much.